Deja Vu at Fox Raceway. Chet Lawrence goes 1-1 again. Hank Deegan 1-1 at the opener. I'm done with people talking shit. All right, guys, well, we are back. We just finished this Memorial weekend. We had the big uh, Paula National first round of outdoors. We're here for episode 21. Have my good buddy RC. We're yes. flipping rolls today. He's over in Barcelona eating some great food, drinking some great wine and the cheese, everything else. RC, how's it going over there, buddy? Dude, it's going good. I'm glad you're uh, you're doing the heavy lifting on Title 24 uh, uh, presented by NBC Sports today. So, uh I'm, uh, I'm dude, I'm having a great trip. Catalonia, uh, MotoGP was awesome. You know, you know how it is when, uh, we get invited to do these things with monster energy, they just do a great job. So it was a lot of fun. The racing was, um, was really good. I mean, it just, dude, I mean, you were at Austin, the, just oh, the yeah. speeds, how fast these guys go. It's just absolutely gnarly. So, uh, it was a lot of fun to do that. So yeah, we were in Barcelona we left there and we just got into uh, Dublin. So I've never been to Dublin. Uh, I'll be in Dublin this week, uh, checking some things out and we're going to do some rides up in, uh, Isle of Man, uh, for the Isle of Man TT this weekend coming up. And uh, yeah, that's it. Hopefully everyone, like you said, is having a great Memorial Day and, uh, you know, uh, heartfelt, uh, obviously, obviously holiday for uh, yeah. the ones that uh, paid the ultimate price and uh, sacrificed everything for our freedom and, and, and to keep us safe. So we uh, appreciate everyone uh, for their bravery and, and that lost their lives and, of course, their families that lost their loved ones. So, dude. Other than that, um, I tried to I tried to watch, but the uh, you know some of the um, Pala National, but it was tough. It was tough because of the the time difference. Uh, but I was logged in the Peacock app for a while, and um, I saw that you were there, right? Oh yeah. I saw there was some drama and all that fun stuff. But uh, that's yeah. it, dude. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Good. Yeah. It was. Uh, thanks for all the all the men and women women that had. Uh, sacrifice their lives and put their lives on the line for us to have uh, be able to go racing this weekend you know have you over in barcelona and now at dublin so uh just want to give a, a big shout out to our our sponsors dunlop boxo united motorsports and quadlock um we couldn't do it without you guys here uh with title 24 so great uh, great partners to have um we'll just kind of jump into it i'm going to tease it a little bit right now obviously everybody has kind of seen and heard the drama between uh, Tom Vial is off track excursion, dock position, Hayden Deegan off, uh, track excur excursion also, um, and no, uh, no dock there. So, uh, we're going to get into that, um, here a little bit later, but we're going to start off with the 450 recap, um, Jet Lawrence making it 24 and O, um, pretty much a perfect day. You know, obviously I was there, I got to watch it. I watched, uh, I brought the boys and the boys got to watch it too. So, um, pretty, pretty epic weekend. Um, you know, a jet was, was, uh, on another level, but I also thought he, he, he managed and just rode in his comfort zone. I yeah. Think he hey, Hey, more. real quick. So, um, like I, I was watching a little bit of the two fifty moto first and it was getting late. I think it was like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And we had to be, we had to be up early to, to go to the moto GP on Sunday because of the, the uh, traffic was so oh, bad. Yeah. But yeah. so I got up. So I was looking at um, Racer X and the, and and how they post the uh, event scores and, and positions and all that finishing positions. And I saw you know talking about 450 and you talk about Jet obviously going one one incredible uh, no surprise uh, that's not a slight towards anyone else so everyone don't get butt hurt about it it's gonna be okay. Um, <laughs> but what happened like what was the difference from the first moto and his lead gap into the uh compared to the second moto because i saw that chase was relatively close like walk mm -hmm. me like what happened what did i miss yeah so uh, first moto obviously uh, chase went down um ran into the back mm -hmm. of uh, dylan ferrandis i believe on the first lap which obviously set set uh chase way back and and uh i thought watching the race my opinion was jet managed his race with about a six ish second lead um, you know, not, no real pressure. Uh, you know, right here, we're watching re, uh, recap a moto two passing, uh, Hunter for, for the lead right out of the gate there. Hunter was very impressive, you know? So, uh, we have chase on screen right now, 
um, you know, coming up right behind, uh, I think it's hunters, what it looks like right now. So they mm -hmm. both rode really well. Uh, but mm -hmm. I really honestly felt like the second moto chase rode rode good, but, um, jet just managed that race. As you can see, they're coming off the track. We're watching replay again. It was a fairly close finish, but I, I personally felt like there was more in the tank. Like, uh, jet didn't have to ride. He managed his race. He knew where, um, he knew where chase was. Um, obviously a lot on the line in the perspective, in the perspective of making it 24 and 0. And I believe, um, I believe, uh, jet hasn't still yet lost a moto at Paula. So that's, uh, you know, with all wow. the, all the races that he's gone. Yeah, here we go. We have ranking Ricky. There you are 2003 to 2005. You have 31 consecutive moto wins and, uh, you know, also 2001 to 03, 30, wow. James Stewart, oh, 2008, 24. And, and Jet has tied James for that, uh, for that wow. third spot there from 2003 to 24. He's got 24 moto wins consecutive. Yeah. Wins. Hey, so um, just again, and just looking at timing and scoring and just because I, I just haven't had a time, uh, a shot to even look at like uh, replays and highlights and stuff like that. Shame on me, but it's kind of fun watching all of this, like, and, uh, you know, watching these replays, but, you know, no surprise. Um, it's going to be fun to watch, to see how, um, to see how Sexton can step up for sure. And, yeah. you know, he's never going to give up. He's going to be right there. Uh, congratulations to Jet, uh, tying James Stewart, on uh, 24, uh, consecutive moto wins. That's incredible. Um, but I don't like, dude, I don't even want to get into this narrative about, man, do you think, uh, I feel like sometimes we all are guilty of, of and especially this sport of building some narrative, like, dude, I think this guy's going to beat this rider. And honestly, like I'm not, it, it is what it is. Jed is the man until someone beats him over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be a lot of fun to see which rider is going to be able to finally take that win away from him. Um, obviously the next guy in line for sure is chase. Um, he, he put in a strong performance there, but at the end of the day, you know, like I'm done, I'm not even going to speculate. Do I think he can do it? Of course, he, of course he can. Uh, when can he do it? Who the heck knows? And so dude, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit back and, and watch it, watch it play out. It might not happen. Uh, I think that, um, eventually it will, you know, but, uh, at the same time, like I'm, I'm done. I'm not even trying to build some narrative and it is what it is, you know, and you can say, well, he only beat, uh, he only beat chase by a second and the second moto, but exactly what you said, Ryan, we, I mean, he was managing, you, you just have to expect that he was managing that race. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For well, sure. And, 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 and to your point, it's, it Chase is, is going to be one of the ones, but if not like Hunter rode really well, obviously dude, he did debut in the 450 class outdoors, yeah. um, you know, pulled two, two amazing starts, you know, pulled two whole yeah. shots. Um, mm -hmm. and as you can see right here, he's putting pressure on jet, man. Like, yeah. you know, they ride all the time together. So they know that, you know, they know all their characteristics, their weak points, their strong points and things like that. But I really thought that, uh, you know, early on in that moto, um, he showed some really good speed, uh, yeah. you know, so, you know, I, I'm looking at as of right now, your top tier is jet, but then you have Hunter and chase right yeah. there. Right. So it's it'll be to see once we get a couple rounds into this, if it's still, if, 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 uh, if Hunter is going to excel to step up to that next little level there where it's, he's in, you know, he's the kind of, uh, taking control of that second position or is chase going to do that? Yeah, some notables that I'm looking for, RV, and, and again, I know, dude, it's only after round one, you know, like yeah, anything yeah. can happen. So, uh, but there's some notables. Uh, uh, it's going to be fun to see how Hunter does. You can only assume he's going to continue to excel. Look at his traje trajectory in the 250s and how he started out his career. Now in the 450s, watch his progression through Supercross. He continued to get better once he got healthy. And he's he's really trending the exact same way that he did in 250. So a couple of things like I'm looking for, can he and will he continue to progress? And will he get faster to run with Jet and to run with to run with Sexton uh, for those whole motos? That'll be interesting to watch. And then a couple other more notables uh, would be uh, Pless. I thought Plessinger, didn't he have a good... I thought he I did. Saw him he rode up. strong. Yep. He rode really strong too. I, I, I haven't made it, made it to him yet just yet, but yeah, he was, he was another one that showed some really good fire early um, and rode, rode really well.
What about what about Ferrandis? Like, did because he? I mean, he did better in this in, in in at Paula than he did in Supercross. Like, did he look pretty yeah. good to you? Yeah, you know, I, honestly, I was, I was, I, I, I can't give you a full full recap <laughs> on that. I was too busy watching, you know, the front the front runners, Jet Chase and Hunter. You know, it was it was a pretty like I said, it wasn't these twenty second gaps, right? Like I was talking to Mitch at the at the at the truck afterwards, and. And, uh, and I know me and you, we've talked about this. We, we, we really, uh, have done a lot of things and think very similarly. It's like, it's like, man, if we didn't win by 20 cents, we were, I wouldn't say bummed, but it's like, it was too close for comfort where, mm -hmm. you know, and Mitch is like, yeah, it, it, he, he brought up a story about you. He goes, man, if I don't feel like I'm, I'm beating them bad enough. Right. And like, mm -hmm. that's the difference between like managing these races. I think then our mentality is like, just go run them into the ground where now it's like if you beat them by one second and it still was the same back then, but our just mentality is a little bit different um, where we, we want to break them right away. Um, mm -hmm. And where I think I saw, you know, like, like I said, J jet managing his race. I think he had more in the tank. I think he could have rode away from chase uh, if he wanted to, but he didn't have to. Yeah. That's, it's completely different mindset these days. Yeah. I, I kind of learned it a little bit um, when Kenny was riding for RCH, like, he, he, he was winning the supercross or something like that. I'm like, dude, what, like you were, 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 what, did you get tired? He's like, no, dude. Like I had like a four second lead. Why did I need to go any faster? And I'm like, dude, that's, that's pretty smart. Completely different mentality from our day. And it is, but it's still too close for comfort. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, <laughs> no. one know? little, one, one little slip. Um, yeah. you know, I was looking through our questions on our, on our rundown, Yep. RV and uh, Jackson uh, Markson. This is a pretty good question. He says, uh, "Hey, legends, uh, what do you think Hunter has to do to bridge the gap uh, to um, to Jet, or is he there already?" And and I thought, you know, I got I got to thinking. Like, I think the biggest thing is just finding a little more speed. That's what he has to do to to bridge that gap. He needs to be, you know, continue to get good starts, and he's going to have to work on that sprint speed. Um, I think that that is, and, and he's going to have to learn to ride a little out of its comfort zone. I think for, for me kind of not judging Hunter, but thinking about him and, and looking at him, I think that's going to be a challenge for him because he's so sound on the motorcycle and he doesn't get out of his comfort uh, zone very often. Uh, so to bridge that gap, yeah, he's going to have to pick the pace up, work on the sprint laps a little bit more and just try to find a little speed. Uh, that's that's how he's going to bridge the gap on just raw speed. Other than that, another way of bridging the gap without speed is just being in the right place at the right time. As you know, RV, if, if yeah. you're lacking a little bit of speed, uh, then you need to make sure that you are in good spots all the time. You need to get good starts yeah. and be in those spots to pounce if Jet slips up. Yep. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. So thank you for that fan question, Jackson Markson. Um, yeah. We're going to head back to head down to Chase here real quick. We had a couple more fan yeah. questions. I'll ask this one for you, Ricky. Ryan Fields, yeah. when is it time to move from talk around bike setup and just take ownership from section about being better? And we're right now we're watching, we're watching replay running into the side of Ferrandis. Man, I'm going to say it. I hate to say it. Bonehead move. It was kind of a bonehead move on the outside there. I know what he was trying to do is come up underneath, but he basically rode right into the side of Dylan. Yeah. Yeah, he did. If you, if you look at, you're exactly right and hate to say it too, but uh, Aaron play that one more time and they'll show you this is uh, where he should have noticed um, that he was going to run into the back of Hunter. So right there. He should have yep. like, or was that Ferrandis? I'm sorry. Yep, yep, Ferrandis. No, that yep. was Ferrandis. So again, right here, he's coming through the corner, and then he's looking up, and then at, right there at that moment, just that split second, and it happens within a millisecond, right? Yep. So you have to have those instincts, and you have to be looking ahead, and just assume the guy is gonna go out, out, you know, fade to the outside, and uh, yep, that that one was on him. But going back to that question. I don't do that. That's a tough one because, you know, when you stop talking about the bike and, and you, you know, like that you just basically have to surrender and saying that you're getting beat just because you're not good enough. And yeah. you know, that for, for a majority of competitors, that's a, you know, that's a tough pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. And I think the only thing that he can do is, 
-hmm. you know, keep doing what he's doing. He's never going to give up. We all know that. That's what we appreciate about Chase so much. But I don't, I don't know that you'll ever hear him, you know, like say, well, you know, this need to be a little bit better or, but he, I, I do feel like he takes personal responsibility sometimes. Like he'll talk yep. about where he needed to be better. Or I just got to work on this area of the race, or I needed to work on this area. Uh, you know, that's basically him saying, you know, to answer, to answer that person's question, that's basically him saying that it was him and not the bike and taking, taking personal responsibility. So, um, you know, but that's a, that's a tough one to go out and admit, but at the end of the day, I think it's best for, for all riders to just, dude, if you get, if you're getting whipped, you know, own up to it and, and go work in the areas where your competitors are better than you. Yep. No, I agree. So thank you, Ryan Fields. We have a, yep. another one fan question. A, uh, uh, what's that? Bro, uh, what is it? Broad, Broadbent? Yeah, Broadbent. yeah. Do you think Chase Sexton should have chose should have cho chose the Yamaha or Kawasaki for the overall horsepower and speed of the motorcycle. Nah, I don't think so. I think, no. I think, I think all these bikes are winnable. In my, my opinion. I think, I mean, dude, uh, yeah. I mean, we've seen the Yamaha win. We've seen the Kawasaki win. We've seen the KTM win and we've seen the Honda win. Uh, we've yep. seen chase win on a Honda. We've seen chase win on a, uh, on a KTM, uh, you know, at, you know, at some stage it's, it's about the rider. It's not necessarily about the bike and the rider's tendencies. You know, when you look at, you know, for there's some riders in the 250 that have changed teams. Uh, some guys change have changed and have been better. Um, but then some guys that, uh, have changed multiple teams are getting the same results, uh, yep. that they always have, no matter what bike that they're on. And that is a horsepower class. I think that, um, 450 class to answer your question is um not necessarily about who has the most horse horsepower it's about who has the the most rideable horsepower and which bike is the most compliant and, and all around the best but at the end of the day um all of those guys all those bikes are winnable in my opinion and 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 and, and to add to that um you know you as a top rider as a past supercross uh, champ champion, you know, you, mm -hmm. you want to pick, obviously some, there wasn't a spot at, at, at you know, what are you going to go to star racing with coop and Eli, and then add mm -hmm. yourself to that mix, you know, like he already dealt with that at, uh, at Honda, right. With jet and, and then Hunter and then Hunter moving up. Like there wasn't as like, you know, that was the right decision for him to move, um, and put himself amongst a team that is a, that is a championship team with, you know, yeah. Roger, Ian, all these guys have been around for ages. Oh. Very, very, very smart individuals um, and a great team. So, yes, is he working through some things? Uh, you know, probably, you know, this is this is the start of the outdoors. This is round one. So let's not get too excited about what's what's well, you know, what's happening. But, uh, you know, I, I, I do think that it was a good move and where he ended up, um, you know, and it, like Sakamoto was 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 a good I think was a was a good gauge for him. Now he kind of knows, you know, first moto made a big mistake. Um, yep. but, uh, was able to come back and rebound. Yep. I mean, Hey, listen, he's, he's plenty capable of doing that. And it's just really, I mean, it's nothing new and I'm not trying to just move on to the 250 class, but it's like, dude, it's, it's, it's basically a carbon copy of last year, you know? And I mean, we know, we know these guys are fast and you just got to go out and beat, beat the guy that we always talk about, you know, and that's, that's really the bottom the bottom line. I'm not doing yep. again. We talk about, we talked at the top of the show. I'm not going to try to build some narrative and, you know, cause I could argue all the narratives that uh, everyone tries to build or their points. Like you talked about, dude, if jet was just managing that race, like you said, which I think he was, then how do we, how do we know, you know, then, ha then how do we know he couldn't have just pulled away by, by 10 seconds, you know, yep. maybe he's cool with that. Yeah. It's too close for comfort for you and I for sure. But, you know what? Go if you go if you want to be the man, go beat the man. So that's right. It'll be fun to watch them. It'll be fun to watch them in Hangtown, right? Hangtown yep. this week. No, totally. Yep, we're gonna have some heat. I'm hearing it's gonna be about a, around a hundred. We got one more Ooh. fan question from O One Chap. Who surprised you the most? I'll just answer it. Hunter, I think for me in the in the 450 class, uh -huh. um, and then in the 250 class, we'll get to them those guys real quick. But that's a question. I uh -huh. would say. I mean, I'm going to have to go out on a limb right now and say Joey Savacci, um, on the triumph, 
uh, hasn't raced, by, hasn't been behind the gate very often, you know, in, in a mm-hmm. while. Um, mm-hmm. New team, new bike, and all of that. So, um, yeah. but yeah, Hunter, Hunter in the in 450 class, and I'll 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 say Joey in the 250. So. I concur. I concur. And 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 not to you know, obviously everyone knows my relationship with Triant, but dude, I mean, Jalik did great too. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, despite despite uh, Joey's second term crash, I mean, the guy the guy had the guy had great speed, and I think that because of his knowledge and because of uh, you, you know, he, he's great. He makes great. He has great, does gr- makes good starts. He's a good starter. Always has been. He's got great technique. He's fast. He's been around. He's had success. I think he's one guy that these, these guys should keep their eye on for the championship. I really do believe that because of how well he's done in the past. Yep. Yep. I, I, I agree. So we'll get, uh, get that wrapped up, but that's 450 recap right there. We're going to jump right into the 250 recap brought to you yeah. by United Motorsports moment of the week. Hayden Deegan goes one, one, but not without the controversy. Uh, I've, I've, we kind of talked about at the end of the show, the off track excursion, we're going to get into that and break that all down right now, but we're going to jump right to the boxo breakdown sound on Hayden, Levi and Tom at the <laughs> press conference. It's going to be good boys. <laughs> let's run that Aaron uh yeah I mean I went off the track uh I didn't accelerate at all I followed what I was supposed to do but uh yeah the, uh Mitch is trying to get us so I mean I don't know do you think uh Levi you think I uh deserve that win or no <laughs> <laughs> I mean I I don't think I would have passed you um it depends how much you slowed up it's a sticky situation though because then my buddy Tom got docked for a uh, similar situation so you can't really uh yeah i don't know i think if tom hadn't gotten docked then it would be a different situation um but yeah i don't i don't know man <laughs> i just i long mean st- he, he beat me though long story short it's gonna be worn out till the end i only missed like two orders and i went back on the track i of course i didn't look back but um i actually saw the video from Ada and it's i don't know like the rules i would say are not so clear like you never know like what to do, to be honest. And I feel like if you don't win a position, if you don't pass someone, I think that's that's not too bad. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, at the end, they, they're going to decide. We can't do anything. <coughs> yeah. Um, I'm I mean, you've, been, you've been pretty heated about this. I mean, yeah. we got the, okay, before, we, yeah, I'm going to let you go on a rant because you're on fire about this. Well, I let's, love you. Let's I'll give you. Ricky, what? read off. You can. I'll hit. I'll let you hit the hit the rule right. book here. Okay, here. And I'll hit, come in on the backside. That's okay. Here's the here's the rules. Okay. Um. A riders must be uh, remain on the marked course. The course will be marked by track markers, boundary markers, hail bays, hail hay bales, hay tough bales. blocks, dirt mounds, etc. If the marking devices are not down, the rider must stay on the original marked course. Everybody got that? Okay. B. A rider leaving the course may only continue by properly re-entering the course without gaining a time or position advantage from the closest possible point to where the rider left course. Okay, that is a key, that, that is key right there. While off the course, rider must immediately slow down. Okay, let me read that again for everyone. While off course, the rider must immediately slow down to a safe speed so as not to endanger life or limb of other riders, crew members, officials, or the public, and must not accelerate in an unsafe manner at any time. Uh, accelerate in an unsafe manner. So that's, that's debatable. And then C, the race director will make the determination as to whether a rider gained an advantage by leaving the race course and re-entering. The rider may be determined to have gained an advantage without gaining a position, failed to slow down after leaving the course, or accelerated in an unsafe manner. Yeah. So that's how the re um that that's how the rule is is read. Um we have RV, we got supporting um, we got supporting video of oh, all yeah. instances. But do you want to tee off before? Uh, do you want to tee off? Go for it, dude. Yeah. Here's, here's. So I, I I obviously was there. I heard. There we go. There's that's one of ours. We're watching replay. So he comes in here, goes misses this complete banner right here, and in plastic, uh, you know, marker. 
throws his hand up. So that's that's one, right? Okay, boom. That one there to me um, is is very questionable. Meaning like that was such a short stint of being off the track. Um, but here's where it gets sticky: is Tom went off once, Hayden went off three times. We have replay. That one, I would say, I would just, I would ixnay that one we just watched. Now this one right here, I'm gonna make. Here he goes around the outside, jumps off the track right here, and look at the tire, just on the gas. Now he lets up as he comes, but still he was on that. This one there, I know you can't overlay them, but essentially is the exact same. He goes ripping around the outside, jumps off. Look at the rear tire, throwing roost off the motorcycle. So my whole deal and rant and and gripe with the situation is is keep it the same you can't dock tom for an Aaron. let's run tom's really quick um also uh you know as he goes off the track catches the side gets on the gas then he let goes to he goes too though i mean he yep. he yep. he gasses but, her up yep he does gas it up and that is and why he got tom, penalized but that is why tom got penalized so my question is 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 if you're gonna th be throwing penal penalties around um, they need to be, they need to be across the board the same to me, this right here, what we're watching of Tom and what we just watched of Hayden, um, are very, very similar in, in, in instances. And then we do have a third of Hayden in from moto Two. um, Aaron will run that one right now. Also to me, this one, he didn't try to stay on the track. Like he literally just rode off the track <laughs> and kind of yes on the gas he still hit that like 75 foot jump so yes was there a break in throttle right as in the middle while he was off the track but he still rides off the track right here like did he gas, even he was dude gas, he he wasn't even gas. looking onto the regular race course yeah and you can see roost coming off the tire and then he hits this like 75 foot jump so I think it's bogus on AMA's uh, uh, from AMA standpoint. Um, whoever's calling the shots for for penalizing the rules and, and implementing the rules, because um, you know I just keep it keep it the same, keep it across the board. Um, it wouldn't have changed the outcome. I, I, I guess it would have changed the outcome based on p penalizing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hayden yeah. did win. He went one one. Not taking that away from him, but you can't dock Tom and not yeah. dock. Tom. Right, right. You want it. You want it. You want there to be continuity yep. between between both guys going out, and and I agree with you. Right. Um, did because Hayden went off the track those times. Is that why he won the race? No, no chance, no, dude. Not he, at all. Nope, nope, not at all. And truth be told, did, I mean Tom Tom accelerated too. Did that? Did that? Did he gain an advantage? I mean, maybe. But nothing substantial. I mean, here's, I, mean here's what, the, it, it, I, I think we need to stop using the advantage word and use the, the, the like as you if you go off the track, it should be slower. You should lose a little well, bit well, of time right off the right. head, right? Yes, Not like yes. we go off the track to gain an advantage, right? It's like you should it should definitely lose two to three seconds. Like you can see the gap right here. The gap essentially stays the same. Yeah. So that is right there. That would, to me, that's that that is worthy of a penalty because he should have lost three seconds. You know what it's like. Imagine, and and you're exactly right. So what needs to happen is as soon as you go off, like right there. Okay, now you just chill. Yeah, you went off course. You can accelerate, maintain a safe pace. That's what. Like when I was like my, I remember my first year as a pro. Like they they would uh, Duke Finch would always say, "All right, if you guys go off the race course." chop the throttle and then re-enter you can't re-enter where you went off re-enter at a safe place but mm -hmm. you chop the throttle um you know you chop the throttle immediately and that's what you do but like stuff like that yeah like like these guys like dude from now on just slow down it almost it's almost like they need a pit road button like that yeah. uh, moto gp has or f1 has where you just hit 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 a button and it retards the timing of the ignition and you just have to go slow you know like it is what it is and again take your medicine so definitely i agree with you there needs to be continuity did um it, it, does it suck that uh tom got docked um of, of course it does because i don't think that he gained or lost any other gained any advent any more of an advantage than hayden did um yeah. i could probably argue that maybe he he gained less of an advantage that Hayden did, but at the same time, like, yeah, you gotta, it's gotta be the same for everyone. I totally agree with you. 
And um, and I think that the rule in, in some way, if the riders aren't going to slow down when they go off course and just chill, then they need to they modify the rule somehow. So the riders yeah. start obeying that rule. So we're not in this position because this isn't like, I always feel like, we're always talking or we do often talk about when there's an infraction or a penalty, was it justifiable? Like, yep. if, you know, so I, I, it just, it needs, it needs some ironing out and there definitely needs to be continuity for sure. Yep. Yep. And, and, and the reason I'm not fretting over it and it's just like, it is what it is, is because I don't think any of those off course uh, incidents um, would have changed, would have changed the outcome of the race. I just don't believe it. I mean, yes, it would have not it, like that's as I said it in the beginning. Deegs yeah. won, won. Deegs went one one, and he he was deserving of that win. But if you take Tom and Tom got docked one position, you dock Deegan one position. Now it changes mm -hmm. the outcome, right? So they just need to have that, like you said, that continuity. Keep it the same across the board. What happened? You know, it, it happened. We watched it, and one got docked, one didn't. So, all right, we beat that dead horse enough. We're gonna head over to Levi Kitchen. Versus the track marker, dude. Um, kind of that pretty gnarly that he was able to scoop that thing up in his boot. Did you see that, Ricky? No, dude, I didn't see that. Yeah, right here, check this out. This is for the pass for the lead, also, by the way. Right there, he picks that sport guard or that uh track marker out, has to reach down and pull it out of his boot. Oh um, my goodness, yeah, dude, said, I didn't know, I didn't even yeah. hear about this. Yeah, yeah. So I, the yellow track marker, um, right here, right there, dabs his foot, picks mm -hmm. it up. You can then kind of see it from. Uh, we'll see it better angle right here. Um, picks up this fork guard, or not fork. I keep calling it a fork guard. Yes, it was right there. Uh, they look like fork guards. Well, they are. They're, yeah, they're like wannabe fork guards. Yeah, that's yep. what they they, they mimic track a fork guard. And look, in my man, opinion, those. In my opinion, like. I can't stand those track markers. Uh, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, the manufacturers of, of those track markers, but we need something better than that. I'm sorry. I mean, I remember, I think they started implementing those uh, towards the latter part of my career, maybe, maybe 07. It's like a yeah. joke, dude. You could run right over them. RV, you know about it. I mean, like you just got, these, these things are a joke. We need better markers. You know, we, we do. Yeah. Uh, we need something that is relatively safe, but something to where, you know, you just can't run it over because a, if you do, you're going to get a flat tire. You're going to rip your foot peg off again. I don't want anybody getting hurt. So please, I, I am being sensitive to that, but these track markers are a complete and absolute joke, dude. I think it's just, it's ridiculous. Go back and put banners up around string the whole track with banners or do something that way. If these guys go off the track. You know, it'll get tangled up in their rear tire. They'll have to slow down or whatever, you know, but it, it's like. It, it, uh, you're exactly right. It keeps you, it really makes you think about, you know, where you, you potentially can push it where you can't. Like it's essentially yeah. like if you go off the track amongst all those Honda banners right there, you're going to get wrapped up. You're probably going down, um, you know, like even to, mm -hmm. even to your point of using hay bales, like traditional hay bales. Um, you know, Supercross is a foam. It's called a tough block, right? For everybody that doesn't know the difference, but yeah, it's foam. Outdoors, they tend to use hay, actual hay bales. Um, yeah, they do suck to hit, but it, it keeps you on the track. I can promise you that the yellow markers don't, they don't deter you at, at all. You, you, you run, you use every, every inch of that track and even run those over. I mean, when they, they implemented them, like you said, Ricky, right here, we watch Hayden go over the yeah. top of one right there. Um, they implemented those, I think, oh, end of 07, 06 ish when I, when I was racing too. And they were actually called track suggestion markers. There wasn't actually a rule. I probably made that rule come into play because I would run them over all the time because uh, <laughs> the rule was you very, cheater. Very, very that's how you want, dude, that's how you want all your races. You're cheating that's running right. over the, it's the only reason you won is because you ran over those markers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, so dude. I agree. We need to do something, uh, you know, uh, banners to your point. I think it looks cool too. I think it adds an, uh, adds an added, uh, added look, uh, looks more professional with the banners. It's a lot more work to do banners like, uh, around the whole track, but, um, you know, it l looks good and it'll keep these guys honest. So, um, yeah. yeah. And I think, well, eh, well, let's head over to the Dunlop due diligence, RC. Obviously, yeah. we we heard um, big, big press day. Um, I was actually out there for press day. I parked the rig, parked the motorhome that day. Yeah. Um, while they were doing the, the press conference at uh, Pollock Casino. 
Um, and then they all come out to ride. And uh, mm -hmm. obviously everybody has heard RJ Hampshire not out there, um, broke his wrist on yeah. press day. What a, what, a, yeah. what a time to break it. Oh, dude. I mean, yeah, anytime someone gets hurt on press or hurt, regardless, we hate it. But especially, especially press day, right? right. Where you're just exactly. supposed to go out there. You're supposed to be for the, be there for the media. You want to check your bike, make sure everything is cool. And it just sucks, you know, coming off such a fantastic year, uh, Supercross season for RJ. We had him on the show just uh, just last week. And then, yeah, when I was reading the news, I'm like, dude, you've got to be kidding me. So, uh, RJ, we hate that for you. Um, hopefully uh, you'll be all right. And I uh, saw your cast it up. But you know what? I mean, I think the only positive is, is uh, you get to spend a little time with the family and those sweet little girls and your wife that you got. So that'll be cool. But uh, I hate that for RJ. I think he would have had some great momentum. Yeah, had, coming into the uh, Pro Motocross Championship, we talked about it a little bit with him when he came on and talked with you and I on Title Twenty Four last week. Uh, so we won't get we we won't be able to see that. So uh, hopefully he'll be better and he'll be back soon, and uh, he can race some of the uh, final Pro Motocross season, and get a good warm up going into the SMX playoffs. But I hate that. You know, I don't I don't know. Like I think as far as press day goes, and you got you don't have to do it. I don't believe, but I think it's good to go out there. Um, but I, I will say this about just the tracks in general, and it could have happened on a slow track, but I, I just don't like how the tracks are so fast these days. I just feel like that there's not enough tight corners. I think that speeds are too fast. And when you're going fast, the, you know, things like that can happen again, that could have happened on some, on a, on a slower track, yeah. but I just think that the speeds Paula in general um is is just fast you know i think that we need to, to slow them down and i think it maybe maybe he crashed on a faster faster track you know yeah I yeah know. I, he, so here's here's what i noticed i was there all day on on thursday and what i noticed was is is press day is 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 meant for press day and what what i mean by that is 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 um learn the track throw a couple whips for the cameras and the video guys and, 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 mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe get a couple heaters in just to, 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 to blow the cobwebs out. But, uh, but number one is, is make it to the, to, to Saturday. And, and, uh, I had heard RJ had hit like, you know, uh, as we all know, Paula has some really big, um, rocks, boulders. Like big rock boulders. Exactly. Not even rocks, mm -hmm. boulders. I had heard, um, that he had hit one of those and, and, and went down, you know, the tracks aren't 100% prepped. They're not, they're not race prepped for Saturday. They are probably 80 to 90% prepped up. You know, they're still, uh, they're still there on Thursday setting up or kind of, and getting banners in place. And, you know, the track wasn't fully watered, you know, things like that. So it's, it, you're there for press to, for guys to take photos and get videos and, and promote the race for this weekend. So, I thought it kind of looked like, honestly, from what I saw and heard, it would look like stopwatch nationals, you know, like guys were yeah. just setting it on Saturday, which yeah. um, I get it. You kind of want to show your stuff off a little bit, but there's, there's not a bump on the track. It's going to completely change. And as you just saw all of it from all of our replays and, and the broadcast, um, the track was ruddy, was rough, was it, the speeds definitely slowed down, to, you know, slower mm -hmm. than press day. And, right. um, you know, like there was some lines, you knew, you know, all the, all the scary things or the, the what was, you know, they made a track change that, that big giant booter triple, you know, that was yeah. there. They changed it into like a roller section up off, off the top. It was after the second turn after the start, that was yeah. a giant triple. I'm sure you guys, a lot of guys saw it on press day. So they make those adjustments per after, after, um, after press day and things like that. So the track isn't 100% there yet. So, um, you know, back to that, just a total bummer, but, uh, yeah. Sucks, you know, dude. guys need to be smart too, that press isn't press is just for press. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's a bummer. Hate that. Uh, I hate that for RJ I hate it for the fans. I, I, I mean, you know, that would have been another guy in the 250 yep. class, you know, a champ for sure, a championship contender. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I hate that for, for, for RJ, his team. And then of course our, our great race fans. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a bummer, but I do like definitely. Uh, it's we talked about continuity and the and the rules and docking guys for if they go off track. I mean, I think that the closer like what you were talking about, like the prep, 
I think the prep, if they can get it closer to what the race situation, the race conditions will be like, uh, that'll be much better. Uh, but I've said it for a couple of years now, dude. I just, I, w- I would love to see these uh, these tracks slow down, maybe implement some more corners, tight 180 corners in there, and and it'll give it, give guys more of an opportunity to make up time. You know, it's yeah. a, it's an area, it's a great place to make up time. Getting into your corners harder than you than the other than your competitors coming out of the corners harder than your competitors when they're. It's really hard. I mean, from my experience, RV to make up time on tracks that are, are just those, you know, the sweeping wide corners, you know, most, yep. most guys, especially at this level, you know, at SMX level, they all go fast. So you need some, you know, you need some techy low speed areas. I think where you can, like I said, outbreak guys or accelerate a little bit harder coming out of corners rather than just be top speed all the time. So mm-hmm. that's my opinion. On it. I agree. I agree. Yep. 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 Um, you want me to? Uh, so yeah, you're doing gotta, hosting. Yeah, why don't you go ahead with the rundown? You want to do? You want to do it? Hey, Aaron, let's show all these peeps, show all our great fans on Title Twenty Four what to look forward to on uh, on NBC and Peacock this week. As you guys know, two p.m. Eastern SMX Insider with Weej and JT. You guys did a great job. Also, you this week, Stu, great job. Uh, Saturday, one p.m. Eastern Pro Motocross Race Day Live qualifying. That's live on Peacock from Hangtown. Make sure you check it out. Then three p.m. This Saturday, Eastern Time, is the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship from Detroit Grand Prix. That's a good one right there. And that one's going to be on USA. And then, of course, uh, 4 p.m. Saturday, and that's 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Check out Pro Motocross at Hangtown. That'll be live on Peacock. So once you're done with uh, Race Day Live at 1 Eastern, uh, take yourself a little break. Go throw something on the grill and uh, tune back into Peacock and watch uh, round two. Uh, Pro Motocross Championship, SMX, um, part of SMX uh, Championship as well. And then Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern, NTT Indy Series, The Streets of Detroit. Uh, it is live on uh, the USA Network, uh, so you definitely want to check out the um, the uh, Detroit Grand Prix. That'll be def- a good one coming off a big win. Uh, New Garden, it's two-time winner, I believe, now. The Indy car uh, was bummed for... Um, Bum for the rain and just kind of like how it threw everything off there. Um, I was watching that a little bit before I went to sleep and I uh, was, uh, was bummed for uh, Kyle Larson also. So, um, you oh, know, man, what, a, what a, what a, what a hell of a finish, huh? I know. Right. Yeah, oh, dude, crazy. dude, I, I, t- Pato, that guy, <laughs> Pato, have you ever met Pato? I have not. Oh, dude. Oh, so he loves moto. Like, dude, he's a fan of all these guys yourself. And uh, I mean, he's so into it. But that guy, I mean, he is always, I always seem like he's one of those, he's always in a position to win and something happens, whether it's self-induced or what have you. And then he gets second or third. It's happened yeah. second. It happens so much to that poor guy. But yeah, hell of a, uh, hell of a um, Indy 500 finish. Yes, it was. For sure. So, um, well, we got one more thing. Right. Yeah, I think, well, we're going to jump right now to the quad lock question of the week. Tyler Guzman, RC and RV, did being a smaller stature individual and in dealing with the bike to your comfort affect the bike suspension or ride of the bike in general? And RC, is it true you would have the seat foam shaved down? I'm 5'5", five five and I'm thinking of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At, well, number one, congratulations uh, on the winner. Yes. You're the winner of the quad lock this week. Slide into the uh, Title 24 DM and JH. I mean, gosh dang it. Curly will Curly. send you. A, <laughs> he'll, uh, Curly will pass you along to uh, quad lock and we'll get you. They'll get you dialed in. Uh, hey, and RV, we got a uh, we got some feedback from winner a couple weeks ago. Nice. Uh, for the quad lock winner, he got his uh, he got his product, and uh, they were pumped on it. So that's Not great. But uh, yeah, so I would I would shave down my seats for sure. Um, I was I'm only an inch taller than than you, so that was a, that's a great great question, by the way. And um, I would lower my subframe. Sometimes I would uh, they would lower my shock like a mill, something like that. But definitely, yes, my sheet my seats were shaved down. And um, and my subframes were lowered, and it helped me tremendously because I always like to get my CG uh, as low as possible. And if I couldn't touch the ground good, 
I just like, I, did, I didn't like that feeling. So uh, I'm not recommending that for everyone, but um, if you're a shorter, shorter, st shorter statured rider like myself, um, uh, you got me beat by a couple, couple inches there RV, but yeah, that, that's why I did it. It, it helped me um, outside of that. Uh, how I set my suspension up, I wouldn't recommend it for any other any other one out there. <laughs> a, a crap load of rebound, uh, yeah. 118 sag. Yeah, I just well, slammed. Well, I was just going to add to that, Ricky. Um, Tyler, <laughs> it's, you know, what we're talking about, I was similar. I never cut my seat foam, but I would shorten the shock shaft and I would cut the subframe. But to uh, the current motorcycles, the current platforms of these bikes – where they've come from, um, from what we used to race. Um, I don't cut my subframe now. I don't shorten my shock shaft. Ricky, I know I've seen, I don't know about your personal bike, but your, your triumph, um, to me looks like it's pretty standard, but just because of the, the geometry now these days that they're so much better than what they were when we raced. Um, yeah. What, my, what, my what happened? Totally yeah. What happened for me, RV and how I was able to go back and get, Get the sag up and the ride height uh, a little bit normal to a normal standard position was the um, was the four strokes and how you know when when you when the the throttle is connected to the rear tire and the thing would you know it just it it would get to the ride height that I liked you know just because of the throttle and the torque so uh, that helped and I felt like the suspension worked better for me so that allowed me to get my suspension up and like you talked about with technology and how the chassis are made um, and what these suspension engineers, suspension uh, tuners can do and how they can get the bike to feel low, but yet with, with linkage ratios and, you know, and pivot bolts and all that fun stuff, how they can get the bike to feel like it's low, but yet you're still using maximum travel. Yep. So uh, they, it has come a long way. And, um, but, but for sure, yeah, we, I would like yourself, I would do, uh, you know, I would shave the seat down um, out. You didn't do that, but I would shave the seat down and do the uh, smaller subframe. So, yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I would just be, be aware of that. You know, I would, Tyler, I would, I would, uh, I would go in little, in little increments on your seat. Um, you know, maybe yeah. just a little bit might just be what you're looking for. So uh, great yeah. question. Hopefully we answered that for you. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So I think our initial thoughts on Hangtown round two um dude i, I can tell you that hey if you if you get arm pumped this isn't a track for you i can tell you that <laughs> yeah that's that's true and i hear it's going to be warm i i uh, i heard it's going to be um it, it, now it could change but the mm -hmm. i i heard on saturday that hangtown is supposed to be close close up in the hundreds um so that'll be our kind of first first one that we tick off the box of a, of a hot um, you know, race that you got to dig, you know, so that's going to, that's going to be good. That's, I think, you know, I was there Saturday, Saturday was about 75, maybe 80 degrees, you yeah. know, nice, perfect weather. Um, everybody could sprint, you know, you yeah. literally was, it was a 35, it was a 35 minute sprint race. Yeah. Um, I, dude, yeah. I, I am, dude, I am stoked that it's, uh, going to be hot. I love seeing these boys, uh, or these riders, you know, compete in, in gnarly conditions because they're gnarly athletes and I like seeing them rise up. So, um, totally. And I think here's the thing. I think it looks so much, it's so much cooler. Um, yeah. it looks a lot better when you're able to, if, you know, to have a, how either ever, you know, any one of these riders that perform well, but when they go out and do it in 105, there's nothing better than coming back to the truck and you know you know getting the overall or ending up on the podium whatever your whatever you're shooting for that goal is and it's 105 out and you can come back and say i just stomped these boys or i just i you know i'm on the podium in this heat you know the confidence builder knowing that you that you, that you got it you know that you can that you can do it in this heat yep. not only at 85 80 degrees um i think it's i think that's that's the grit that is what pro motocross is is all about is when the track gets rough and then the heat comes out. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. And then a little strategy comes into play where you just can't yep. go ham the whole time. So I'm, I'm, I'm pumped for it. I think it's a really difficult track um, from a um, soil standpoint. You got that super hard base RV, as you know, and I feel, right. I feel yeah. like if your bike isn't, isn't working well, it really shows up at a track like that. Cause you can feel every nook and cranny at that place, dude. 
Yep. So yep. it'll be uh it'll be a good one for sure. Hey, do you think it'll be hot? So I heard a little story this week when I was in Barcelona by one of our old great friends, and um, he's telling me like you had a pretty hot hot first moto in Thailand one time. Was it hot it was, there, bro? Yeah, it was hot. Yeah, we had we had a hot <laughs> hot moto that second one. Um, was it warm, I, dude, it, or what? Yeah, it was up in the hundreds, really humid. You know, really humid. I put on a strong performance stamped it the first one but uh kind of kind of uh overextended myself for for moto two i think i still ended up second or third but caroli got me um in moto two that's my only overall actually that's my only overall in uh in the mxgp series so um i'm a, technically the last american to do it so i'll give my dude hey how one how what how that. was dude how was thailand dude do the experience was, I mean, I still didn't really get to really experience it cause I was there for a job and there for a reason, but I did get to walk the streets, um, and go see the street food and go, you know, buy some fake Louis Vuitton and stuff like that. So, um, <laughs> that was seriously one of the best experiences of my racing career, um, was being able to go to uh, Qatar, uh, Argentina and, and, and Thailand, you know, that's, that was one thing why, what I was, looking forward to and also bummed when I ended up getting hurt was not going to, you know, these other places of the world to, to race your, to race my motorcycle and yeah. experience it because, uh, it was, it honestly was, was super, super cool. Wish I could do it again. Awesome. Awesome. That so, was a good one. Yeah. My buddy, our buddy was telling us a story about how it was a, it was a warm one in Thailand. It was. And, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm looking for. I think that'll be that'll be great at Hangtown. I think it's um it's going to be gearing up. That that 250 class can be a lot of fun to watch. And and of course, and the reason I say I'm putting so much emphasis RV on the 250 just because I think there's more guys that have a legit shot of winning. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just think that the you know the 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 450 is going to be fun to see how it plays out and when when and if Jet slips and is Sexton going to be be the dude to uh, take over. And, and, and to watch the progression again of Hunter, like you said, how well he was doing. And then, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't turn your eye on, on AP. He's, he's had a great yep. year. Yep. 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 Totally. Well, that's, uh, that's it. Thanks to all of our listeners for, for tuning in, supporting myself and Ricky and title 24. We couldn't, uh, couldn't do it without you guys. All of our, all of our partners, uh, you know, our partnerships, uh, United Motorsports, Dunlop, Foxo. Um, and quad lock thank you thank you to uh, for all your support and uh, get over and get your uh, wherever you listen to uh, you know download your podcast audio versions of podcasts available wherever you download your podcast also the video version available on motorsports on NBC youtube page or on peacock so um we're pretty much anywhere you can find anywhere you get your content we're there yep. so uh, get over download it listen to it uh, driving to work or what, you know, whatever, whenever you have that downtime. So thank you guys. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all. So go for it.